Well, the health minister has confirmed that the cholera outbreak has not been contained yet. Residents from Hamanskral, north of Pretoria, have been hardest hit with most of the fatalities recorded there. Let's make sense of this outbreak now. We're joined by Dr. Feriel Adam. She's an environmental justice activist. Dr. Adam, thank you so much uh, for your time this evening. Looking at, at history, seven cholera pandemics have occurred in the past 200 years, with the first pa pandemic originating in India um, in the early 1800s. And the seventh cholera pandemic is officially the currently a pandemic and has been ongoing since 1961 and that's according to the World Health Organization. Uh, how do we make sense of what's happening in South Africa at the moment after the deaths of 25 people? So in South Africa, firstly, in Hamaskar, they're still trying to establish the cause of the cholera outbreak. And um, but having said that, is that given our state of our wastewater treatment works and the amount of sewage that's spewing into our rivers and streams, that um, there's you can make a kind of correlation to the fact that there's something wrong with the water. So there's some element with the water um, in Haman's Kral and in other parts of South Africa as well. The thing is that we should not be at this point. We don't have to be. We have the ability to have cool, green, uh, safe drinking water. And that's not happening. So issues for the past years um, and we're seeing infrastructure decay, lack of maintenance, bad governance and collapsing service delivery right across the country. So what are the risks of seeing similar occurrences um, mm. in other areas not related to spread from Haman's Kral? very high. I think that, uh, and you are correct, that when you look at having high levels of sewage in your rivers and streams, it's an indicator that there are other pathogens that would exist as well in those rivers and streams. So you're talking about hepatitis, cholera, um, and the chances are very high. I mean, the Mail and Guardian did a story a few years ago and estimated that 50,000 liters of sewage is flowing into our rivers and streams per second. And I have a feeling that that has increased over this period. So definitely there's a risk. It's not a localized Hammanskral issue. I think Hammanskral is an example or it's the starting point of what is going on across the country. Free state wastewater treatment works in some parts of the free state are in a really bad state. Um, and we can see that with you know a few cases appearing there as well. I think that many South Africans might be dealing with uh, stomach bugs, etc., and it could be because of the water that they're drinking. We don't know because the tests are not being done. So you're saying we don't have to be where we are. Unfortunately, it's taken years to get to this level of decay and collapse. It's not going to be fixed overnight. How do we hold municipalities accountable when leadership changes mm. and I think um, uh, spokesperson Fikil Mbalula said you know the, the um, DA in, in Tswane has changed mayors like you change socks uh, you know and, and I, I don't think that can be said just of the DA in many municipalities across no. the country mayors are being swapped you know in a revolving door kind of policy how do we hold them accountable well, that's really rich, you know, coming from uh, if we look at the Auditor General's report and, you know, the state of our municipalities are in disarray and most of them, you know, it's across the board. So I think parties must stop playing politics around people's lives and water. I think that um, the, 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 the challenge is that until we hold municipal managers and people accountable for what's going on in our municipalities, our wastewater treatment plants, our water treatment plants, this is going to continue. And we can't have that every time we have these outbreaks and everybody gets involved, but then after two weeks, everybody forgets about it. The sewage is still spilling into the rivers and streams. So until we don't start arresting people, charging people, firing people, this is going to continue. We know load shedding can't be avoided. It's a necessary evil at this stage just to try and stabilize the grid. But is it doing serious 
irreparable damage to other areas of service delivery like water provision, water purification? It is because, well, the municipalities have not allocated funds to have backup power, sufficient backup power. And it's not like load shedding started yesterday. Load shedding has been around since 2008. And so they could have, you know, they could have better planned for what we were going to experience. So I think that the planning uh, at local government level is poor. We could have had better power in place to make sure that we have backup generation backup power so that our pumps can work. And, and so that's, that's the reality, is that without those backup powers, with long periods of load shedding, it's directly impacting the quality of our water as well as the amount of water that is available for people. We are running out of time. I've got one very quick last question for you. South Africans are trying to put plans in place to deal with load shedding. People who can afford them are buying inverters. People who can't afford them are buying additional lamps, gas cooking stoves. Are South Africans in a position now where they need to urgently start looking at their own off the grid water infrastructure in, in case this becomes an even bigger problem? I think in some parts of South Africa, we're still okay. So city of Joburg, I think is still fine. Western Cape, Cape Town is still okay. So you've got to look at, and, and I think government will be releasing their report, their blue drop report, which gives you the state of our drinking water across the country. And I think using that, we must then ascertain what the action must be. It, it's very localized and it has to be within those municipalities. But I think there are parts of South Africa, particularly parts of the Free State, um, where people need to boil their water. And if they and, and, and even in terms of you know uh, having other sources of water in terms of climate change, it makes sense for us to start um, to do rainwater harvesting. But obviously your, your tanks need to be able to clean the water that's coming into you so you can't drink it, mm. but you have access to some water. So I think that there's a combination of things. It's not simply as saying go off grid, but I think that um, in many of the big cities right now, it's still okay. I think we need to keep monitoring. We need to demand that government and municipalities make those tests public so that people know mm. and people have faith in what they're drinking. Thank you so much. Uh, that was Dr. Ferial Adam. She's an environmental justice activist.